Life is tough in the Sahel, and the land is vulnerable to degradation. Farmers know that their survival depends on keeping their soils healthy, and that animals play an important role in this, as do trees. In Niger, manure is appreciated by farmers. When you don't have your own animals, a good relationship with a herd of family has mutual advantages. On soil that has benefited from a new application, you will see good development of the millet plants. But on soil that has not received any manure, the millet won't even flower and nothing will be obtained from it. Pastoralists know that they can benefit from farmers' crop residues and their trees. In turn, they give something back, and that's fertility to the land. Let's listen to a farmer in Niger. About tethering, what we do in our village once the fields are harvested after the rainy season, the farmer sees the herder and lets him know that his field is in poor condition. To remedy this, he asked the herder to leave manure from the cattle on the field. They agree on a place where the herder can camp. The herder can stay there for a week or 10 days or even 20 days before changing his camp. This type of contract is usually based on friendship between the two. Similar arrangements are found in Mali as well, where a community has set up an association to make the best of these reciprocal arrangements between farmers and herders. The Barahogan Association, although new itself, has resurrected and strengthened an ancient tradition. That's very important to note. Not all communal rules and regulations in Africa are collapsing. Barahogan literally means the king of the bush, the custodian of natural resources. Sarif Gindo, president of the Barahogan of Bankas, tells us how it works. <laughs> There is the king of the bush, the one who takes care of nature. If there is a problem regarding trees or water, for example, if erosion is damaging the soil, the members of the Barahogon will deal with it. That's what the Barahogon is all about. It's a tradition that existed in the old days, but was abandoned. Then, in 1999, we brought it back to life again. Khadija Usumani is a member of the Barahogan and also of a women's group who cultivate collectively. Previously, we cooked with the straw left after harvest. Now, with reforestation, whenever there are eight to nine branches on a tree stump, we follow the rules and just take two or three to cook with. That's an advantage for us. Arrangements about pastoralists' livestock, grazing on harvested fields, are made on a family basis. This means individual meetings between a member of the Barahogan and herders, in this case, a pearl woman. Trees are integral to the whole system. The renowned agroforestry tree, Fiderbia albida, provides shade, fixes nitrogen from the air, and is a valued source of fodder too. Livestock eat the pods and deposit the seeds with their manure. This helps farmers manage the natural regeneration of trees in their fields. Other trees are important in different ways. Balanites produces fruits, and these are also valued in Mali for fodder. 
And another characteristic tree is the tamarind, from which a syrup is produced. The pearl herders, who have reached an arrangement with the Barahogan community, make sure that the manure is broken up into small fragments to speed up the revitalization of the land. It's part of the bargain. Crop residues and fodder from trees are processed through rumination and turned into milk for the pastoralists and into manure that fertilizes the farmer's hungry soil. This symbiotic relationship in land management between croppers and herders existed in history and is enjoying a renaissance in some areas, but it's been poorly understood by outsiders. Will it survive? Well, what's special about the Barahogan Association is that it involves not just men and women, but the young as well as the old. Amadou Gindo is the voice of the younger generation, and he's a keen farmer himself. We are an association of young people within the Barahogan who cultivate the land together. We earn money and save it for our future needs. And this is the hope for the future, that those who share resources will continue to work together through associations, formal or informal, to look after the health of the land. Stress from climate change will only serve to make it even more important. This is adaptive, sustainable land management led by cooperating communities themselves, and they deserve to be recognized and supported. <laughs>